Now you can hear me. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. It's the first live stream in forever. And today we're just editing some video. It's nothing super, super special. I just figured, eh, why edit video by myself when I could just broadcast it to the internet? Because, yeah, why not? Anyway, Riley Slifka here. Today we're going to edit a video that looked a lot like what you just saw in that intro there. The startup screw. <laughs> Can't speak today. It's been a while since streaming. Um, the startup video to... Um, the stream here we're gonna edit something just like that because it's spring planting i got a bunch of really cool footage here just a few days ago and i think we need to make a little yeah, just a one to two minute video set to some epic music and put it on the internet a lot of people really like making these types of video they go really well even in vlog format content but not everybody knows exactly how some of these really go together and how to really cut to music so if you're wondering how to do that this is the place to be, whether you're here live or watching later on. That's what we're going to be doing today. And we're going to jump right into it after we say hello to Little Farm Big Cameras and Jack Rusa in the chat. Hope you guys are doing well this evening. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump into our software of choice, Adobe Premiere Pro, which is over here. Yeah. Okay, so Adobe Premiere Pro is what I use to edit. I'm a professional video producer that works primarily in the ag field so i do use industry standard tools don't be intimidated by all of this if you're just starting out however feel free to pick things up here and there and learn as we go here and if you do edit in adobe premiere pro hopefully you'll learn a thing or two but this is mostly conceptual and doesn't have that much to do with the software anyway let's go ahead and start a new project here so i'm just going to click new project and we're going to just say 2021 seeding caps locks on seeding real and i apologize for the screen scaling here the monitor i use to edit is massive and i highly recommend that you grab the biggest screen that you can to edit video on because yeah you won't regret it okay and i got to choose the correct folder here project folder on my hard drive 2021 seeding and i usually like to make a folder in here and label it edit and that way adobe can dump all of its uh preview and auto save files nice and neatly into that folder okay and so we're greeted with an empty workspace we need to import some media so that's up here for me i changed the layout in my default workspace in adobe premiere once again we're going to come in here and we're going to look for what are we looking for we're looking for seeding 2021 this folder right here and i don't have a separate footage folder that's okay we're just gonna grab all that click open and adobe's gonna do some thinking here and wow that might actually take a little while jack says it's been a long time since he has seen a live stream it indeed has i used to do these agri live live streams back in the day and unfortunately Life just got so busy, and honestly, the interest in general on YouTube was kind of declining in that department. So I decided to quit doing the Agri Live live streams. Did this thing just freeze? Good grief. We're not even like three minutes into the live stream, and Adobe Premiere is already crashing. Lovely, lovely. This is how it works, guys. It's not all super perfect. It Software has a tendency to just not do what you want it to do all the time and it does look to me like it is yeah yep yeah, okay so we're gonna we're gonna do everything that we did two minutes ago again because uh there are no way adobe premiere is moving forward with this so close that you know maybe it would help if i closed audition because audition is doing some weird things i was working on uh some client audio here so i'm gonna close that reopen adobe premiere Ooh, we should probably save that yeah, okay. So now we open Adobe Premiere again. Here it goes. Opening up. Do, 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 do. Also, I'm going to check uh, some live stream stuff while I'm at it. Looks like we have a couple people watching, and OBS has not thrown any major fits. Here's that seeding project I was talking about. See if we can open it again. It's probably going to take us back to a blank workspace. Yep. So let's try that media import one more time, and if it still doesn't work... Then we're gonna have to resort to plan b problem solving 2021 seeding grab this and grab all the way through that you know maybe it would help if i 
deselected all these random SRT files. I don't even know what these are. I really should just delete them or sort them off from the actual video clips. I'll just deselect them here. And we'll import that audio later as well. And let's see if this gives us better luck. Oh yeah, this is way better. This is how things should be, guys. Meanwhile, I'm gonna clear up a little a couple things on my second monitor so that I Oh whoa 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 whoa. It's gonna do it again. And I know why this time. It's because I'm messing around with a couple extra Adobe windows on the other side. Okay, take three, guys. Take three. So um maybe I should like edit this video later so that everybody who watches this later doesn't have to see all these silly uh errors. Oh, 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 okay, it worked. It worked. It's imported. Sweet. Look at that beautiful footage of a Steiger 435 in the Grand Missouri breaks of central Montana and a couple other random things such as a house that we don't need. I'm just going to clear these out right now. I did import one of these SRT files. I really am curious because SRT is a captions based file. So I'm really curious why a drone would save caption based files. That's really interesting. Uh, but we don't need it, so we'll get rid of it. Okay, I just froze up the computer again. I'm wondering if it's because I'm streaming and trying to edit and trying to record to a hard drive. Maybe that's what's going on here. All right. So we got Hesley in the chat. How's it going? Thanks for tuning in, guys. Kind of a slower paced uh, live stream compared to some of the older stuff back in the old days. But hey, it's a live stream. I haven't done a live stream on the channel in... Um, if we don't count FPVX, uh, which I didn't even publish, if we don't count that, I haven't streamed since December of 2019. So it's been a while. Quite honestly, it's been a while since I've done anything super epic on this channel. And it's just because that's how life has been lately. And there's a ton of commercial projects that need to get done. And sometimes there's just flat out some farm work that needs to get done when I'm up north helping my family out as well. So... But guess what? We're streaming right now. So, okay, let's go ahead and jump in to an import window again. We're going to import our epic music because that's what we're going to start with. So, okay, footage is in. In fact, we can even make a folder called footage and drag all of the video, the drone shots into the footage folder. We can make a folder called, actually, I'm not going to make a folder called music because there's only one track anyway. We won't be that organized. Anyway, let's go ahead and pop open this music track. And I'm just going to drag it straight into the timeline. Make it so that we can kind of see it. I'm going to move it down to audio track three. By the way, guys, is this unbearably small on the screens that you're watching right now? Like, can you see anything that's going on in my screen capture for Adobe Premiere? Or do I need to really seriously consider downsizing my resolution so that you guys can see? Um, this is how it normally looks for me, but if you're watching on a phone, this is, might be kind of hard to follow along sometimes. But not too bad. I think you'll still get the concepts. Anyway, let me know. Let me know what all you guys have been up to lately in your lives in the chat as well. We can get some back and forth going on on there as well. Little Farm Big Camera says it's small, but not bad. Yeah, so we'll just leave it alone. Anyway, guess what? Epic music. So... What we're going to do first is we're going to take this probably, oh, it's only a two-minute track. I'm going to take this two-minute track and edit it down to 60 seconds of music that still has a beginning, a chorus, maybe a bridge point, and an end. So how the heck do you do that? Well, you, you listen for the beat. So I'm going to start playing the music right now. Here's its intro pretty slow we could even chop a little bit of that off and put a crossfade in there i think control shift d is your shortcut for that by the way fellow adobe premiere editors and then we're gonna hit boom and i think i can even cut here and i might i might change my mind on some of these steps it just really depends but my goal here is to make a 60 second video for Instagram and I want a version of this track that fits that 50 seconds just to, excuse me, 60 seconds just about perfectly. So I think we start to build here. To, um, we're gonna transition right about 
here. So that's where we probably might even start. Let's listen to here. Mm. Okay, we're going to try some more crossfade things first. So if I add one there, how does it sound? You can't hear what is going through Adobe. Okay, good to know. And I bet I know why that's going on. I'll bet Adobe... Uh, well, it is routing through Focusrite. That's that's the thing. It's audio hardware. Maybe it's because I'm in ISO mode. Yeah, it's probably because of this. So I got to change this to MME and default output to Focusrite's box because that's where OBS is picking it up. Um, this could screw a couple things up, but we'll see. So I can still hear. Let me look at OBS. You guys can hear. And I'm actually going to down because otherwise you guys can't hear me uh no sound nor video uh hopefully you guys have video <laughs> you do not have video in the uh in the video window in my editing software right now because i haven't put anything there yet but uh okay can you guys hear i'm gonna play this music track can you guys hear the computer audio now it'll take about 20 seconds for me to get an answer on that <laughs> Wow, this is an epic track. Yeah, it's good now. Sweet. Yep, that's what it was. It was a very, very weird Adobe Premiere setting, and OBS just wasn't picking it up. The good old joys of live streaming. Yeah. Anyway, okay. So let me let me actually concentrate. I need to listen to this music and make sure the timing is relatively decent. So I'm going to do that now. Uh, I don't know if I like that. So I'm going to have to mess around with it a little bit. I think it needs to scoot back about like that. Give it a little more lead time. Do, do, do. One more time here. Okay, I think we can work with that. I'm gonna cut there. And I'm gonna cut here. Oh, just kidding. We're gonna cut. Yep, right there. So, boom. All right, see if I did that right. So we're gonna go into boom right here. Two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three. Nope, we didn't do it right. I need to cut right about there. Let's see, let's count it out now. And one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four. Okay, that's about right, but it's a little short over here. So you see what I got? You see what I'm doing, guys? I'm splicing the audio so that it doesn't drag out quite as much. And, but we still have a lot of the elements of the song in a shorter time span. So I'm basically just cutting stems of music is what it's called. And I do this first because it sets my overall vibe, and then I'm gonna bring in all that sweet drone footage and lay it up on top of this. So it'll be great. Okay, we're still not quite there. Little Farm Big Camera says he hates audio editing. I actually like audio editing, but it can get very tedious. It's definitely more fun when you start putting the video down. But what's even more tedious is going through interview tape and going through your original footage. You'll see the going through the original footage part. It's going to take a little while, even though it was just a 20-minute drone flight worth of footage. So, okay, let's listen to the music again. And boom. Two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four. Okay, that is about right. I just need to add a crossfade. Three, four, four, two. Oh, we're still not quite there, though. <clears throat> so let me chop a little off the end so that way I can slip this with the slip tool. 
Yeah, I think I... Okay, let me look some back here. I think I'm actually short on uh, the left part of the stem. Yeah, this is tricky. This is a tricky song to cut up. Oh, I did have it right, though. Okay, okay. Two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four. Um, dun, 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 dun. So that's what we need. Bum. So we need... Probably right here. Boom. Yeah, that's what we need. Bring that in. Man, why is this so tricky, guys? It's still not quite lined up. You know what? We're going to resort to plan B. And that is to do this instead. And now I think I can kind of hear what's going on. So now I'm just going to crossfade all of this into each other and assume it's lined up enough that it won't double skip. And it is, so we're just going to move this a tick. We're going to move the frame over to the left and see if that improves or makes it worse. That made it worse, so we're going to go two frames to the right. And that is equally terrible. Reset. Okay, let's try a, let's try a less dramatic crossfade. And then let's also try scooting this whole thing over here. I think we're coming in early on the right. I think that's what's going on. Um, so we actually need to scoot this over a little more. Yeah, that's what we're doing. We're, we're too early on the right hand. I think I've got it now. Oh man, guys, this is tough. I still don't like it. It's still too sloppy for me. That kind of helped. Okay, so let's just listen from further back. Dum -a dum dum. Dun dun. So what if I crossfaded it here? Okay, so I think the timing's right. I just need to work with that transition a little more. So I'm going to move on from it for now and maybe come back to it. And we're going to keep cutting this down. By the way, I got to make myself a personal mark that the end of the video is going to be no longer than here. And I just set an out point there so I can see it on the timeline. Dun, dun. So this is where we're going to be revealing the big cliffs, right here. And I think we're going to even move... I think we're going to do this. I think I just killed a whole span of time right there. A little bit of redundancy, so we're just going to trim a frame off of each and then band it together. And I don't even think this one will need a crossfade. Yeah, that flows right in. And this is where we're going really epic right here.
and I'll run most of this. tough on our 60 seconds but I think it'll work I think what we'll do is we'll trim a little off the beginning here and there now it fits in okay I'm going to assume the audio is good. We're going to jump right into pulling out the drone footage now and seeing what we got out from the field. Footage folder, and here's what we're going to do. I just double-clicked a clip. It's going to bring it in the left-hand source monitor here, and this is actually where I'm going to watch it. And actually what we're going to do here is we're going to sort to make sure that we're starting in the right order. By the way, these three, these four clips right here, other projects. Um, I forgot to delete them earlier. Okay, we're still not quite in order because this is... That's our hero shot right there. So, boom. Look at there, guys. Right there. This is this is among the footage that you are going to see in a YouTube and or social media video. It's awesome. Such good conditions for this footage. Really awesome. By the way, who's watching? We got 12 people in here. Cool. 115 people have already showed up. And, um, yeah. Yeah. Let me know where you're watching from in the comments if you're just joining us. Doing a live stream on how to put together a really cool, short, drone sizzle reel thingy, whatever you're supposed to call it. Okay, so we're going to start with DJI Clip 7. I think this was the first one. And, oh, man, this is going to be a great start. We're coming in. That air drill's in the background. We're just going to let that clip flow for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And look at the clouds. Look at the horizon on this drone shot. It's epic. By the way, you guys want to guess what drone took this footage? Because it's not the Inspire 2. Definitely not the Inspire 2. By the way, not only is this not the Inspire 2, but I might quit using the Inspire 2 for 75% uh, of my contracts. Because, I mean, this is pretty amazing footage coming out of the drone that this footage was shot with it rivals the inspire 2 at least in daylight conditions it's nuts also i can crop the sensor on this particular drone and that gives me the same effect as putting a 25 or 55 even millimeter lens on the inspire because that's why i like that inspire drone guys because you can switch the lenses on it and you can get a lot more parallax with it uh it's a fancy film term for the background moving the opposite direction of the foreground element uh kind of an inner complicated thing to explain just by words but um yeah so oh we got no pointer in here how are you doing man just drone footage or any juicy 4K 120 from the A7. Oh, man, I wish I had 124K footage from the A7S 3 But guess what I didn't bring to the field when I shot this? The A7S 3 Yeah. And I totally could have brought it, too. Um, so that's okay. This is going to be a pretty short video anyway. And we can make a ton of angles work with just this drone footage. Okay, Mavic Air 2. That's close, but it's not quite it. It's not the Mavic Air 2. But it's very close. It is indeed the 2S Mavic Air. And it's a beast. If you guys are looking for a drone, Mavic, uh, whatever it's called, the Air 2S, awesome. Awesome drone. I am very, very satisfied with it from a flight performance perspective. It's not as fast as a bigger drone such as an Inspire. It's probably going to get bucked around in the wind a little bit more when flying in windier conditions, although you can fly in windier conditions with these smaller drones now. Um, it's an awesome drone. And if video quality, if you don't need that one-inch sensor and you don't need the absolute best in camera tech, I would highly recommend picking up just a standard Mavic Air 2 because that's still an excellent camera by today's standards, and you can get some great imagery with it, and that drone's just amazing. I cannot believe how much the drone tech's advanced in the last year. It's amazing. 
Okay, back to back to cutting uh, B-roll here. So let's see. Can I slingshot around this? I probably can't. I probably can't. That's a little too jerky to do a slingshot with. Um, so we're probably not going to do that. We're probably just going to fly into it like this. And I just set an out point, so I'm going to use the colon or comma key or whatever. Oh, that's not what we wanted to do. Let me set an endpoint here. Boom. So that's going to drop that on the timeline. And holy cow, that's like 20 seconds in itself. So we'll definitely be cutting this stuff down a lot. Going back to our preview, we're going to look for another angle that I might use. So what I'm doing right now, guys, is I'm picking out the shots that I might use. I'm not putting them anywhere in particular yet. I'm building what's called a selects timeline. So the second shot, um, I'm not in love with the contrast and the lighting on this one, but we're going to pick it anyway because who knows, it might get used, and it's not a bad shot, especially with that air drill coming across. You can see you can see the uh, oh, yeah, you can see the toolbar work in there. Uh, I do pan away a little soon here, it looks like, so I'm probably going to cut this here and drop it in the timeline, which I believe it just did. Yep, yep, it did. Um, what's next here? Behind the cart? Uh, I don't think this is interesting enough to really need to use it, but this is kind of cool because the air drill stops and I come and I orbit around and you can see my dad's getting out of the tractor and he is unplugging the blockage monitor system because it's terrible and it never works and apparently you have to do this all the time and yeah he's totally like looking at the drone being what the heck you do and do it as well gets back in his tractor um so i think this might not be a bad shot let's go ahead and take this okay drop that in um this is another kind of cool shot because the framing is pretty decent. And I like this pull out. Yep. Um, I'll only take the front of it because it gets a little jerky later on. That is the one downside to this uh, Mavic Air 2S drone is I feel like it's still, and I could, I got to get used to it still. And I probably also can um, calibrate my sticks and change the uh, sensitivity on them basically. But I feel like this one is a little jerkier sometimes, even when you're in that cinema mode or whatever that kind of smooths out everything. This is me messing with its digital zoom on there, as you can see, which, by the way, is pretty sweet because I can crop this sensor quite a bit before I start actually losing um, sharpness. Uh, Pointer says, haven't gotten any A7S three out, the A7S three out for any planting so far yet either, but yeah. Do it. That A7S III camera is, I'm, I'm actually using it right now, is my glorified webcam. If it's still even turned on, it might shut itself off randomly because that's what cameras do. Um, but it's a great camera. Great camera. Does that certainly deserves to be doing more than just sitting here as a webcam right now. That's for sure. Um, because there's so much you can do with it. Best bang for buck camera if you're really into some cinematics. So... However, I will also say that a $400 GoPro, a lot of people can't tell the difference between a $400 GoPro and a uh, $5,000 A7S III setup sometimes. So, yeah, that's a thing. Okay, next clip. Let's see what we got going on here. Uh, nothing? Oh, yeah. Uh, we're not going to use this one, actually. This is when I had the drone in glorified FPV mode, which is kind of cool, but it's not aggressive enough. Like, look at this. See how it's banking? It's banking with my turns. Cool concept, but um, it's not FPV level. So maybe an FPV drone in the future. That would be pretty sweet. But guess what? That stuff takes so much money and so much time to learn that um, I don't know if I'm going to get around to it this year, to be honest. One of these times, though. I'm also kind of hoping that DJI does a, takes a different approach with their FPV system 
because I really like a lot of the things that they implement, implemented with the uh, DJI FPV system, except for the fact that it's a giant plastic shell and is not going to crash very easy and uh, is not very user serviceable in the grand scheme of things. <clears throat> so if you're getting an FPV, I would not necessarily recommend the DJI. But the reasons I like the DJI is I do like that it has that GPS capability in it so that you can uh, hit your panic button and level that thing out before you crash it in the ground. And I just also like DJI's integration. Um, having the ability to see your cinema camera via remote feed, that would be pretty nice, I would think at least. Okay, next clip. This is the actual next clip. Oh, this might be kind of a cool shot too because I think I kind of come around this tractor and it's a Panda Reveal dad working on a wiring harness. So I... I'll go ahead and take that. And then mm, that's it. That's all in that clip. Okay, that was a short one. How about this one? Did it load? Is it in? Yep. So he's going to climb in the tractor again, isn't he? But I liked the first angle better. So I'm not going to take this. And it looks like that's going to be another end of the clip. Yep. Okay. How about this one? Uh, I think I'm just messing around because it was taking a while for us to figure out this blockage monitor problem. Agtron, that's that's who to blame here. This could be kind of cool. Uh, let's see, because I remember I did this orbit. Yeah, so I think maybe I'll use like here through here and do something with that. Um, and that's about all we put in here. And then the rest, I believe, is cliff stuff so I think we'll use something like this I like the trees in the background that's just kind of a good overall then we come out then we come around then we kind of come back in um, and right here is gonna be not a bad shot that's probably one of the best of the front of the tractor oh Okay, I ruined my shot. Why would I? Why on earth would I have done that? That's okay. I think that's still enough time length to use. Um, it's because I'm messing around with parallax, even though I didn't really get anything good with parallax because I cropped my sensor. That's what I did. Nah, not gonna use anything from there. Next clip. This is where things start getting epic. Uh, let's kind of cool diving through this low spot here but it's not all that significant mm. and I feel like our yaw's a little jittery because I was probably not in slow mode but it's not a bad shot I'm going to take it from here drift behind that air cart a little bit uh, now the tractor's turning I like that too Keep it rolling. Keep it rolling. Oh, man, it keeps getting better. Um, and we're probably going to fall apart just about... Eh, right there. Right there is where we fell apart. So, boom. That's a lot right there. By the way, Whiteman, how's it going? Whiteman says, my planting video is not as epic. It's hard to make them exciting. It does take time. Uh, it's already taken me probably 40 minutes here, and we're probably only a third of the way done with this edit. So it takes time. If I can get this done in three hours, I'll be amazed. That's going to be a long live stream, isn't it? That's okay. People can come and go as they want. We've already had 180 people stop by from the looks of the statistics on YouTube here. So... That's, that is what it is. People just kind of stop by, they can say hi, and then move on. Watch the interesting parts later. Or just the final cut that I'm hopefully going to be uploading tomorrow morning if this goes well. Mm, so I like this right here, I think, once I get more headroom on this tractor. Yeah, that, that'll work. That'll work. That's another thing I like about these smaller drones. I feel like they're way more stable when you're flying closer to the ground than the Inspire is. And you can, post, you can just pull off shots like this much more easily. Let's see what this guy looks like. 
Mm, mm, nothing special. There's nothing really catching my eye here. White Man's asking, which drone is this? Um, It is not the Inspire 2. This is a new one. And this new drone might almost replace my Inspire 2 completely. Any guesses on which one it is? Might do a video on this, by the way. I do have a... Uh, I have been meaning to do a drone review video on the Inspire 2 just because I thought it would be kind of fun because um, it is a very impressive drone and people probably always wonder, oh, well, if I buy this, will it drastically improve my video quality? And the short answer is no, it won't. And so I kind of want to make a video about that very subject. I've scripted some of it already. I just haven't gotten around to recording it yet. Uh, so this shot right here. Whiteman says, Air 2S, I've been debating selling my Mavic Pro. Well, guess what? I am selling my Mavic Pro, my Mavic 1, that is, and already have the Air 2S. I would say if you are... If you're still flying a Mavic 1, upgrade to the Air 2S because it's just a world's difference. Um, that 1-inch sensor is amazing, but if you already have an Air 2 non-S, I don't necessarily think you need to upgrade. But it worked really well for me because I was about to buy an Air 2, but I'm glad I bought the S version because this S version is going to save my Inspire a lot of miles now. In fact, 75% of my drone contracts from now on might be done with the Air 2S. At least the ones that don't have to be quite so industrial and don't need the absolute best camera on a drone. So it's just way more convenient to take a drone that's this big compared to a drone that's this big with you. So, <laughs> yeah, it's such a great drone. And the software on it's great. The app is way better. The new version of DJI's app. It's like called Fly instead of Go or something. I like it better, although it is a little more simplified. And sometimes from a professional standpoint, you're just missing things there. But um, it's a great app. It's much cleaner and just works better. The OcuSync in this Air 2S is amazing. I've, I've yet to test its actual distance. But, man, that video feed just never, never garbles up on me. Okay, so I wanted that shot right there. Probably won't even use it. What do you think your Mavic Pro is worth? I'm estimating my kit to be worth about $350 to $450. So I might have a local that's interested in it, so I have not publicly advertised it for sale yet. But I have one battery. That one battery in my Mavic Pro only has probably 15 flight, hour, or flight cycles on it. And that's just because... I never really liked the original Mavic that much because that camera did drive me nuts. Like, it just garbled up so much detail, especially in grasses if you're flying over grasslands. And it just wasn't my favorite camera to work with. And when you had the Inspire with you for a lot of these also, it just, you just took the Inspire. Now it's the opposite. Now I'm going to start taking the new Mavic and leaving the Inspire at home a lot. So, yeah, once again, definitely would upgrade. I think Mavic 1's resale is pretty good right now as well, considering how old that drone is. I think $450 is actually pretty decent for that drone. I bought mine refurbished for $650, so it was still in new packaging, but it technically had been sent back after a previous owner. I don't even know if that previous owner ever flew it. According to records, no, he didn't, but... Yeah, who knows for sure. Um. Okay, next clip. We got two left and we're done. I think. Three left, actually. We have three clips left. So, I kind of like this coming in here. Mm, it was a little jittery, though. A little jittery. Little Farm Big Camera says, I don't have a drone at the moment, just a camera and a gimbal setup. Probably we'll get the Dare 2S. Yeah, if that's something you can do, I would recommend that drone. If you do want to save a little bit of money, most people in the world are not going to tell the difference quality between an Air 2S 1-inch sensor drone and the Air 2's 
whatever i forget what sensor is in that thing but it's still impressive that air 2 i was just about to buy the standard air 2 when this air 2s came out i jumped on the air 2s deal instead because long term i think it's going to hold up better but that air 2 is still very impressive um i think i'm okay with using this clip make sure i'm still including these oh yeah oh yeah we are perfect 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 okay keep going here have you ever crashed a drone yes i have crashed a drone before unfortunately it has been a while i've not crashed a drone in at least two years i think uh but i did crash the inspire once it was actually when making one of these seeding reel videos it was in 2019 i crashed sideways into a tree like one of these trees at the edge thank the thank the lord it didn't go over the edge because that would have been almost irrecoverable but it hit a tree and broke the whole right arm assembly on that inspire and ripped the camera and gimbal off of the drone completely which actually saved the camera from further damage by the way so i repaired it myself i bought a new arm i tore down the whole drone replaced that arm and then also replaced the vibration absorption board for the camera and gimbal because that's the part that ripped off and good as new now 200 dollar fix plus hours for labor but much cheaper than uh buying a new drone that's for sure especially if it's an inspire inspires are uh they're not cheap and mine is technically not insured either because they are also not very cheap to insure they cost almost as much as car insurance for something that generally isn't as expensive so the the strategy there is to just have enough money to be able to replace a drone so if i total my inspire now i probably wouldn't I don't even know if I'd replace it at this rate because I just don't know if big drones are going to be as important anymore with what we're putting camera-wise in these smaller drones. If we can get a Mavic with interchangeable lenses, that might end the Inspire. Other than wind resistance, Inspires don't bounce around in wind currents quite as much, and a couple other things, such as just needing to carry a high payload camera, but... But if you need to carry a high payload camera, then um, you, uh, okay, hang on, guys. Now I'm getting slightly less impressed with the uh, Air 2S footage here. Uh, you guys will not be able to see this on the stream because the stream's probably uh, um, condensing this no matter what, or what's the word? compressing this no matter what. But um, we're losing a little bit of detail around the tractor here and in the trees here. It's a little fuzzy, and I'm probably on that 2X crop, and that's what's doing it, but... The Inspire is going to give you a cleaner image here than this drone. That's where the Inspire would still win. Um, Register it as a helicopter. Man, that would be interesting. I almost lost my drone in the wind last Saturday. Got to be careful in that wind sometimes. I've never flown a Mavic in anything beyond 20 mile an hour, but yeah, I'm sure I'm sure they could get tossed around a little bit. All right, we're still cutting away at our footage, guys. This might be a cool shot right here. Yeah, right there. Mm, I probably won't use it, but I'll include it in the selects anyway. And I also like this toolbar going across. That's actually a really good shot. This one will probably make it. Yeah, that one will probably make it. smooth what's your cpu um my cpu is actually so if you're if you're talking about the uh computer that i am using to edit video on this is a custom built pc i have the intel 9900x that's an eight core processor that clocks up to five gigahertz super fast not the fastest by today's standards though uh my video card is a what is my video card a 2070 yeah it's a 2070 rtx card 32 gigs of ram it's a great mid-range system but what's making this process go smoothly is the codec that this video was shot in adobe premiere is really picky about codecs sometimes even though it'll let you import all of them 
I'm using an H.265 codec, and it's way smoother to scrub through footage in Adobe Premiere with this new codec versus H.264. Um, unless you're using GoPro Cineform. GoPro Cineform is flawless, but yeah, it's a good processor, good rig. Um, I'm really looking forward to what Apple might be doing with this M1 chip once they get a professional grade of that. I might end up switching to Mac because I think that's ultimately going to be a much more efficient system in the future. And I'm pretty impressed with some of the stats I've been hearing about the M1 as well. So, yeah. Computers, it's an exciting time to uh, be in the content creation industry. or It will be in the next few years because I think we're going to see some immense improvements with switching from this x86 based architecture to the arm processors like apple is apple i think is going to have some very good luck with all that Ooh, look at this shot guys look at that this one's probably going in maybe at a faster speed um and i think i'm going to use both it here and here because that's going to be some cool movement when sped up then we're going to come back down maybe i think i'm going to skip that shot there i'm going to cut to this shot and i'm going to let that breathe for a little bit and take its out point import it and then this is what's really annoying my sd card filled up right here boy was i glad to have internal storage when this happened because guess what we got an internal storage file and that saved this most beautiful shot in the project we would not have this shot had i not had an internal storage backup on this drone to resort to to cut to um so this is amazing I'm glad that these Mavics have an 8 gigabyte internal storage pool. It really saves your bacon if you're a half mile away from yourself and you're going to miss this shot opportunity if you have to go land, switch the card, take off, and fly out again. So this saved my bacon. And this is the uh, this is the Instagram shot right here too. So actually while I'm thinking about it, I'm just going to like find the absolute perfect frame, probably right around in here. And I am going to... I'm actually going to mark it because I think I might do a little something with this later. And then I'm also going to drop a still image from it. So to do that, I'm just going to pick the right folder and just dump it in here as a JPEG. Boom. Now we have that. Now I can put that on Instagram or wherever just as a still to say, hey, this is a, this is what seeding in Montana looks like. This is really awesome. So like over here on the other side, if you look at the where my mouse pointer is, this is all winter wheat over here that's already emerged. That's what this green is. And it's just amazing how farming works out in this country. It's just flat, and then boom, there's cliffs in between you and the neighboring field. It's just epic. Epic, epic, epic. Uh, 4K camera, yes? Yes, this is the Air 2S camera. It actually shoots 5K. I can't remember if it's 5.4K or rounded down to 5K, but... Um, I haven't even tested the 5K abilities on this drone yet, but it's epic. This is a very great camera. I don't even think my Inspire in the non-RAW format can record 5K. The Inspire in the RAW format can. If you pay $1,000 for a software license and another $300 for an SSD, that's proprietary, but, yeah, you know, whatever. I don't, I don't use that. I just use micro SDs on my Inspire 2, and I still get a very high-quality codec off of that into H.265. So probably something like that. So how far does your land go there? So this field is probably about 300 acres. It probably stretches two miles wide, maybe even three, three miles. If you're asking how far back beyond the cliffs do our land go? Um Okay, let me think. The far green is not us. Actually, neither of these greens are us. These are neighbors. These are neighbors. Uh, and do you own the valleys? Um technically, yes. Out at this point we do, but usually these are BLM. So 
Yeah, yeah. It's big, wide open country, though, that's for sure. We're about, where this is shot, we're about three hours away from a town with more than 5,000 people. We are an hour away from a town with more than 1,000 people. And we are 20 minutes away from a town with more than five people. <laughs> so it's a ways out there, that's for sure. Okay. One more drone clip? Or is that it? I think that might be it, guys. That might be it. That might be it. So, now we are in the home stretch. We are going to figure out how to piece all this together to the music. And then we're going to do some transitions and whatever else needs to go on this video. And then we're going to wrap it up for good. So, yeah. I think we're going to start with a clip like this. I'm going to scoot it over there. So, I'm just going to leave all my selects over here on the right side of the music. And then I'm going to do my work here. And right there is going to be a transition point. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to slingshot this one or speed warp, speed ramp it, excuse me, not slingshot. Silly me. Um, yeah. Got a comment that came in. I don't miss Premiere Pro at all. The stream is giving me anxiety. Does that mean you are on DaVinci Resolve? Someone should really, uh, I should really learn some DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve would be great. And yeah, I, the audio is clipping because it's a music track and it registers as such. I'm probably actually going to turn it down about 6 dB anyway, especially if I add sound effects. Um... Or are you talking about my stream audio? Because my stream audio could be clipping. Because I haven't checked it. In, oh, no. We're like negative 20 over on the stream. I'm actually going to gain that up a little bit. A little quiet. Okay. that That's better. Yeah. Final Cut. Final Cut's great. Um, I don't have experience with Final Cut. It would actually be better, I think, for things like this. I think it would just work a little bit faster. I am just so trained in Adobe Premiere Pro and so so many other people in this world that that's what we're using. And you can do some great stuff in Adobe Premiere, but it has issues. I do think that the world will shift away from Adobe Premiere unless Adobe fixes a lot of things. Um, cuz it's just it's just a clunky software by 2021 standards when you have things like Final Cut and even DaVinci Resolve so much nicer to work in if you actually know their respective workflows. Actually, while I'm thinking about it, I think I will turn down that audio a little bit. There we go. All right, we're getting close. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. So we want to pull that a little further. I think we're a little jarring with the uh, speed ramp. I really want that to drag out more. Mm, okay. You should see the edits I make with Final Cut. Look at the first minute of my latest video on the DJI FPV drone. I spent 10 hours on that first minute of the video. Wow, that's that's a lot of editing time. We're, I told everyone here, this is probably gonna be about a three hour edit and that's... Um, that's about all that it's gonna be, but it might it might drag on longer. I think I'll stream it for three hours, get it to where it's a point where it's almost done, and then pick up on it on my own later tomorrow and then upload it on Saturday or Sunday. So by the way, I am gonna see if I can check out your channel here. Um they got rid of the feature in the chat where I can just look you up, but I could probably just search that. So I'll make a note of that later. But yeah. Check out that DJI FPV video, that's for sure. And yeah, speed ramping in a premiere is horrid. I'm almost wondering if there's a plug-in. That wasn't bad, though. It's a little jarring coming into it. 
I think to help with that, I'm just going to put a little quadratic in. Yeah, yeah. That'll work for now. I might change my mind on it later. Also, just pulled up your page, Unbox Warehouse. Awesome channel. 40,000 subscribers as well. Congrats on that. Uh, that alone is an accomplishment. Um, I will have to watch some of these videos. Looks like you do some awesome stuff. I'll do that after the live stream. Maybe I'll learn a thing or two about drones and other tech and filmmaking and, oh man, all sorts of cool stuff. Okay. So... I'm just going to roll into, oh man, I don't know what I want to do here. I'm probably going to like do an edit and then quit streaming and then completely change the edit because I changed my mind on so many things. So I'm going to speed this up to 200. This is probably also easier in a final cut because I'm going to cut right after that because we're going to go for some quick quicks around this part of the song. Oh, I can't have that shot though. That doesn't work. But what if I reversed this? I really need to make a keyboard shortcut for this because this is a silly way to do this. Adobe. Um, and then you come into here with another speed ramp. Like that. And I do know that you can drag the clip with the ray stretch tool like this to shorten or lengthen it. I try not to with drone footage sometimes because you will notice frame stutter if you don't have it synced exactly up to a divisible number. Um, and I probably notice that way more than other people do, but obviously I'm doing it here too. Um, but if it's easier for me just to say, oh, 200% is fine, I'll just type in the percentage. And I'll probably put a glitch transition or something in here, and that'll that'll kind of help that transition. Otherwise, I'll be switching the clips around. Because as is, this does not work. So I think the next shot will be Dad crawling back into the tractor. Mm, where did I put that? Here? Yep, here, and we'll just take a... That's gonna be about that length, slip it around. Probably about right there. And then we're gonna do some super epic orbiting of the cab before he takes off. And this is probably going to go faster as well. And I'm still going to have to fix that music. Now that I've come back into it, I've decided I don't like that. But we're going to roll with it for now because the timing is correct. If the timing's not correct, it'll be somewhat of an easy... Um... Yeah. Oh, he's just brushing something off, but I might change that shot anyway. And this is where we're going to be back to rolling in the field. Okay, don't like the... Don't like the jar there. There we go. Oh, I still like the... I still like seeing more frontward of it. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. This clip's garbage. And I'm just going to make a garbage pile over at the end here because that's what I do. Um, so we're going to start with this shot right here. Can you match color on the wide shot? Oh, yeah, we got color correcting to do for sure. 
Yeah, I think I might actually change something around here. Actually, I'm just going to slow it down to 75, and we'll use some optical flow to help us out there later. Even a little slower. Because I want him to stay looking at the wiring over there in that shot. All right. Then we'll use something like that. And then we're going to use a close-up of the drill. So I did a pretty good job of my selects, actually. It's flowing in order for the most part. Um, I'll probably use something like that. Do you do sound design? I do. I don't know if I'm actually going to get to that step in this live stream, though, because I don't know if I'm going to get it all done in one sitting here. I might end up having to come back to this project tomorrow. Um, but I do have some audio recordings. I didn't from this year, but I do have audio recordings from this exact air drill tractor setup of the tractor engine and the air drills fan, which makes a really jet engine like whir and just some toolbar dragging across ground effects. And I will add that in. So I, uh, la if you go to my channel, look up seeding barley 2020. We're basically making another version of that video, except uh, maybe a bit more, a bit of a shorter and more high action edit, maybe. So. Uh, also, if anyone is curious where this music came from, it's an epidemic soundtrack. And it is a S Elysium. It's an Edgar Hop track. If you look up Edgar Hop on Ed Epidemic Sound, Ed 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 blah, 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 blah. Epidemic Sound is my go to for music for 75 to 90% of projects these days. I used Artlist for a while, a couple years, and um, it's not my favorite anymore because everybody else is using Artlist and I just got bored of the tracks there. They're not updating with new stuff as often as I'd like. I will probably buy another Artlist subscription. I'll probably resubscribe to it the moment I need to grab a track from there again. But Epidemic's been working pretty well for most of my stuff. So the only downside to Epidemic, no TV broadcasting with them without a super fancy license. So if you're going to TV, you got to use Artlist or something very expensive. But probably Artlist because Artlist is not very expensive. Okay, okay. Next shot. Probably gonna skip that one. Oh, I thought I had another close up. Oh, let's just use let's just use over here and we'll hopefully the color difference might be weird because obviously it was cloudy here and sunnier here in the drone flight, but I think we can use that right there. The only thing I don't like about that is we're going to our left here and we're going to our right here. Yeah, thanks, Unbox Warehouse. Um, so that this is what my channel is. If you are new here, it is basically... I basically want this whole place to be a place of inspiration for people to pursue agricultural careers. And specifically, this live stream right here is obviously pretty techy. This is for the other ag content creators that are out there. So... But yeah, it's an awesome channel. I wish I could do more with it, but I just get so busy with some other commercial work for other clients here and there. So I don't always get around to the YouTube projects, but yeah, this is, it's an awesome video in general. is just an awesome thing to be involved with. And there are so many people out there that are even more talented than I am. And that's what I love about it. I love learning from others. So hopefully I can teach somebody something here in this live stream. Did you see the movie Silo coming out? Yes, I saw the trailer for it today, actually. I'd, I'd known about Silo for a while. And that is... I'm going to turn this down. I am definitely hear myself clipping. It's definitely 
a huge stride in ag media. We've never had an ag film hit movie theaters across the United States, particularly in big cities, like especially Portland. Like they're screening it in Portland, Oregon, most hipster city in the universe. And that's awesome because this is going to open people's eyes to a lot of things that farmers deal with in the day to day. And I also think Silo could be a very informative movie for current farmers because obviously it's promoting, well, not promoting, it's covering a safety topic that is of huge importance. So I have not watched the full film yet. Uh, maybe I'll have time this weekend to check it out, but it looks very well done, maybe a little overdone in some ways, in my opinion, but the cinematics on it just look excellent. I think to add some punch on these videos, you should use some close-up GoPros and the tires rolling, gears. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, obviously, I didn't have the time to get all the POV shots on this project, but that's what you need to do. You need to take a ground camera out there. And you need to mess with some GoPro angles. Um, I think I did that in Harvest 2019, Along the Edge 2019. That's another video on that channel we had some more POV shots and it's still not, gr it's still not ultra epic, but it's there. And I actually miss that a lot in agriculture media in general is we used to be like that back in 2013. We had the GoPros on the unloading augers and uh, inside the combine cabs and just these super up close shots of gear shifters and everything. And I kind of reenacted that in 2019's along the edge harvest video, but um, it just doesn't seem to be the most popular choices that ag content creators are doing these days. Anyway, and most ag content creators are honestly just vloggers. They're just, oh, here's a cell phone camera or a GoPro with a, a Rode Micro on top of it or something like that. Um, yeah, so <laughs> they're, they're more for just entertaining people in general and less so the cinematic values but welkers are nick welkers always done a pretty good job of that and i've done a decent job uh doug arm connect is another cinematic ag creator out there who does some amazing stuff he's slower paced but i just love his work he just does a beautiful job of documenting his family's harvest out in kansas and even a couple creators here in the chat i know whiteman does some pretty cool stuff here and there very similar to the project i'm working on here Little Farm Big Camera, same story. Uh, there's a guy from Australia that's pretty good. So, yeah, it's out there, but it's kind of a niche world here where we really appreciate the cinematic qualities of things. Uh, most of the guys watching farm videos on YouTube are the, oh, I'm going to sit here and watch 20 minutes of Millennial Farmer talking about John Deere tractors, which is cool. I just don't have the attention span for the, those longer videos, which is why I like these one-minute epic reels. Okay, okay. Um, so where were we with this edit? So I don't think I'm going to do this. I think I'm going to save this for the next movement in the song. Um, but we could... We could use this. I don't want to reveal cliffs until we hit that next movement of the song, so... And I'm going to... Oh, I should have just used slip tool on this. That's okay, whatever. Um, but that's gonna drag it out too much. Okay, so we will use we will use actually I'm gonna I'm gonna let this be. I'm gonna go straight into my hero shot and get that positioned. And my hero shot is going to be this one. I'm gonna put that right where the music drops. Boom. Uh, probably a little late. Yeah, back it off two frames. And I'm gonna even 200 this. because we're really not going to notice that that air drill is moving twice as fast as it should be. Yeah. Uh, add a little tail to it. And then we're going to do a zoom in shot of the tractor. Probably 
Probably not that, though. Mm. I don't know if this makes sense. I'm going to try it. And if it doesn't work... Also, Unbox Warehouse, while you're in the chat here, DJI FPV, overall thoughts in less than five sentences, what you think about the DJI FPV, because earlier we were talking about that a little bit here in the chat. I have mixed feelings on it. I do not currently own a DJI FPV, but yeah, do you go DJI FPV or do you go build your own systems? What do you think should be done and where things stand right now? All right. I got to drag that out a little more. I just want to take a break from the wide, epic cliff shot. Um, maybe something like that. That's a candidate. Ooh, that's kind of a cool shot. What if, what if I mess with some speed ramping here, guys? Let's see what happens. But I'm gonna do it here. And we're just gonna do something like that. Oh, okay, okay, hang on. We're actually gonna, we're gonna change this up a little bit. That made me lose my spot. Uh, response to my question. I'm absolutely hooked. It's been the most fun thing I've ever had flying drones. I was mid-training with built drones and haven't flown them since. I can take them off at night in my backyard. And that's why I'm thinking the DJI FPV could be awesome. Because that GPS abilities that it can have so that you don't have to take it off right away in full FPV mode with no guidance would be kind of cool. I'm just not a fan of the build quality of them. I feel like why I feel like they should be on carbon fiber, but maybe that maybe that'll come a different time. I, I doubt it, but maybe. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do there. And then I'm gonna fill a gap with something else. Maybe like this. This definitely is not gonna be my finest piece of work, but that's that's not the point. This the point of this is just to make a sixty second uh instagram reel to be perfectly honest i'll also upload it to youtube but maybe do an extended cut for youtube um harvest footage is much more interesting to edit because you have so much more going on during your harvest times on in farming than you do your planting times and so that that's where your really really awesome stuff can come from so let's do let's do the toolbar now. And then let's do one more like this and hopefully that'll color match to this color profile which I really like. But when the sun flat out isn't there that's kind of hard to do. And then we'll fade that out and one minute. That's how that's going to go. Okay, so now I got to fill in a couple gaps. I move this guy here is that gonna work yeah maybe might work man this is kind of a cool clip 
I might have to replace some of these. That's kind of a cool clip. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to actually replace. I'm going to try replace here and see which one I like better. I'd suggest having a clip fade to black and then drop the new clip on the new clip when it starts. I'm guessing because of the music. Um, maybe. I'll try it. I might try it. If it's not too flashy, I think that's a really cool effect. And I've definitely done it before, so... And then let's put this guy here. And that's already a full build. We we have filled every gap on our 60 seconds there. So now I'm just going to go through the rest of the uh, selects reel here. And see if anything really catches my eye in here still. Not too terribly much. Not too terribly much because of the jerky movement. This one is pretty decent. I'm going to I'm going to move it up there to remind myself. This one's cool, but it's similar to the hero shot. This one is also pretty similar to the hero shot and not quite as good. And this one is irrelevant. So, I think we've picked the correct the right clips for this 60 second reel for what we got out of the field. Uh reminder, this was one drone flight. I spent about 20 minutes getting this footage and then had to leave the site. And so we're just, we're making the best out of that situation. And I think we got some very great, excellent footage. And I mean, this is the reason why. This shot right here is pretty much the only reason why this video is even going to exist. Because this is just epic. So let's go ahead and watch through it as is. And then we're going to move on to some color correction. Ooh, laggy lag. Okay, I'm going to mess with something a little more here. Oh, except I can't go below 50. So I probably will just slip this around a little then. Uh, we're also going to try optical flow on here and then render that out. Do, 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 do. Bing. There we go. See what that looks like. Not bad. I gotta fix that music though. Um, okay, I know what I need to do. I know why this is throwing me off now. It's probably because this would be a more natural cut point. Gotta go, but otherwise I'll be here another four hours. Yeah, that's about how it goes. Uh, thanks for tuning in. See you later. Oh, I'm still not. I'm still not satisfied with this. Wonder if there's a magic make music good plugin. Okay, how about no? Oh yeah, it's just because we're not lined up. We aren't. We're not lined up. So... So I got an extra uh, right here, I think, is where it actually needs to cut. Yeah. Try that. That just shaved me a few milliseconds off the end, but... Okay, so I need to cut one frame off. I'm going to cut this frame here and see how that works. Yeah. And then do that. Also, Final Cut does background rendering, no drop frames when editing 422 10-bit 4K60. Yeah, that background rendering sweet. Um, we usually don't have to use it a ton in Adobe Land these days, but you saw I did do it once there, and yeah, I had to manually render out the optical flow for it to display properly for me. So, yeah, it's a thing. Um, and I'm wondering if DaVinci Resolve also has something similar to that, because I 
I think that'd be great if DaVinci Resolve does. I have my eye on DaVinci being the next go-to. It's just not quite there yet through these run and gun, gotta get it done fast sort of edits. It's great for really diving in depth on things though, and especially with color. Okay, so I'm gonna start this from the beginning again, give it a watch over and see what we think. Okay, hang on a second, guys. I don't know why we're doing glitchy glitch there, but I really do want to see this not do that, so I'm going to give it a quick render as well. Come on, don't freeze. Don't freeze. I don't know if I've saved in a while. Check some YouTube stats here. 371 people. Huh, dang. it's a lot of people that have come through. Most people are just kind of joining and then um leaving and that's totally fine most people are not interested in this subject matter most of the subscribers on this channel would prefer just to see the final cut to be honest or anything that has to do with farming that isn't me editing a video at my desk but okay power oh sorry sorry guys i'm gonna read comments now Power Director just got rid of the render preview. I was all looking all over for it. Interesting. So Power Director is a mid-range consumer grade editing software on Windows. It's I think you can buy it like for 50 bucks or something like that. Maybe a little more. Um uh, I used to use it back when I was a kid before I jumped into Adobe land. And it was pretty impressive what you could do in there, that's for sure. But it's some parts about it are clunky, and it's not very efficient sometimes. Um, yeah, it's an interesting software. I really wish that we had something in between the industry standards and um, the Windows Movie Maker universe. That doesn't exist anymore, by the way, but... Yeah, Final Cut's kind of that, because you can pick up Final Cut for 300 bucks one-time fee, and it's relatively easy to use for newer editors, but um, that's Mac only, so if you're on a PC, yeah, you're not doing that. But We might be transitioning more to Macs in the future anyway. I This M1 business that's going on, if we can get more stuff optimized for ARM and get our professional workflows into ARM processors for video... I think I think that's the future, to be honest. Will it happen for VFX work and 3D rendering and all that? Probably not. We've got years and years and years to go before all that that part of the world catches up to ARM, but um, maybe it's closer than we think. Okay, gonna give this a watch. Oh, look at that lag. Okay, we're going to black right here. This is probably what Unbox was talking about. And we're just going to cut to black. I don't even think we'll fade it. It'll just be boom, gone. And then we'll epic reveal it. I went to Sony Camera Camp in Montana with a lot of big YouTubers. Was the only one there with PC. <laughs> Got a Mac and Final Cut, and yeah, now you know why. Yeah, I really need to. I really need. To, I have a. It's just a 13-inch MacBook Pro. That's my daily driver for a laptop. But I still haven't uh, messed around with any Final Cut stuff on there. It is a little underpowered for very professional uh, workflows, but. Montana. First of all, I'm in Montana, so I'm curious what part of Montana was the Sony Camber Camp in. Second of all, which big YouTubers? All right. 
So I think I had one shot in here that I might replace again. Let's see what it is. Yeah, it's this right here. So what if I did this? Because it's wide shot to wide shot. I'm not a big fan of that. That would work, though. Okay, cool. Color correcting. Color correction time. Flathead Lake. Yeah, it's a Kalispell. That's a pretty cool part of the state. I work out of Bozeman, Montana, quite a bit. Bozeman's kind of our Los Angeles of the state. It's it's ridiculous down here. I probably won't last much longer down here, to be honest. Rent is going up nuts. It is almost as bad as Seattle. Um, and the farm location where you're seeing this footage, my family farms in central Montana, right in the middle of the state, where we kind of have a mix of mountains and um, high plains. And... Um, yeah, it's cool country out here for sure. It's just a really long ways away from any um, anything. <laughs> We're three hours away from a city of more than 5,000 people. Two and a half hours, but still, it's a lot of hours. And that's a lot of um, big name YouTubers. So did you actually meet those guys? Because um, I, yeah, I think I recognize all of them. Um, I'm a big fan of what Make Art Now has been doing. I just, one of these times I really want to actually get to his level with really spending a ton of hours on an edit and, or just a project and storytelling in general. Um, Gerald Undone, I watch him for some things. Don't watch iPhone though. I have watched Becky and Chris before. And obviously everyone would know who I, Justine and Jenna are as well. I don't normally watch them. So, but that's a... That's a cool list of people. Okay, okay. Maybe we should do an ag YouTuber camera camp. That could be kind of fun. Get the uh, Welker and whoever else. Uh, that's the thing is those guys really aren't that passionate about the cinematics. But and we totally need a crossfade here, by the way. But I was doing color, wasn't I? Yeah, okay. Let's see if we can... Okay, Unbox Warehouse, another question for you. How did you find this live stream? What brought you here? I'm wondering if it's an SEO thing. Um. Okay, I need the match tab. That's where I was going with it. So we'll go into comparison view, and we're going to drag it over to the hero shot, because this is the best color profile out of the box of the camera. I'm just going to see what this does. Oh, yeah, that, that did a lot. That was pretty impressive. That actually worked for once. Unbox Warehouse can probably teach me about everything to do with color correction, by the way. Uh, this is not my strongest suit, but we at least make it look better than straight out of camera. You searched for drone and filtered to live. Interesting. That's cool. Well, thanks for thanks for stopping by and for consistently sticking with us. I remember back in the good old days, I emailed Nick Welker his thoughts on Power Director. Oh, those were the good old days. <laughs> now Nick Welker doesn't even edit his own videos. He hires a team out of Michigan to do it. Um, and they do excellent jobs. Their their name is Modi Services, M-O-D-I. And they've done some excellent work. They're very good editors over there. And I'm sure their rates are pretty decent too, to be honest. It's kind of... For the YouTubers that make enough income, like I think Nick Welker, it's a uh, Nick Welker's a uh, almost five hundred thousand subscribers now, and with that and the Case IH sponsorship and several other brand deals on his channel, he probably makes 
he makes a lot of money. It's it's six figures somewhere. Um, no one will know for sure because that's not any of our business. But um, still, a lot of that still goes to editing because editing gets expensive quick. Try not to watch Dogecoin hit the toilet. So I'm watching. Oh wait, oh wait, wait. Hang on, hang on. I gotta I gotta check something on my phone here, guys. Do 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 do. Oh no. Oh no, he's right. It totally is tanking. Um, yeah. Buy Dogecoin right now. Now might be a good time to buy. It's not a terrible tank though. It's just markets are down today. I haven't checked all day, so. Okay. What was I doing? I was color correcting footage and I jumped to this part of the timeline for some reason. Okay, so I like I like this profile here for my general cloudy shots. I might add a I might add a little bit of what on top of this later. Right now I'm just kind of going for let's make it look decent. So that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Um, yeah, just recurve this a little bit. Oh man, it's already eight o'clock over here in mountain time. Yeah, time flies when you're editing. That's probably a little bright. I'm actually gonna use, I'm gonna pick from here instead. I need somebody to make like this super awesome like heads up display digital futuristically HUD effect with all the sound effects and everything. Um, might be stealing part of that idea from a certain make our now video. You should motion track some clouds and pass through them with After Effects, but that'll take an hour. <laughs> that'll take multiple hours for me to edit. First of all. Um, but it's been done. You're 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 on a good track with this. So, Doug Arm Connect, Larash Harvest videos. Look up his 2019 version of that, I believe. His opening shot, he used the Google Earth Studio, and layered in a cloud layer in After Effects. And we did. We flew th from the globe into the U.S. through layers of clouds, and then into his drone footage of the combines going to the field for harvest man it was an epic he, he told me he spent probably 20 plus hours editing that intro alone that's ridiculous that is commitment right there uh yeah i could probably drop a link let's go doug arm i don't even know how to spell his name let's just go to my youtube and i'll pick him up from my sub box do, 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 do. Hang on a second. Not that guy. Different Doug. This one. And then it was his 2019 video. Yeah, it was the most underrated um, work that he's done that I've ever seen. Unfortunately, it only has 50,000 views. It really deserved a million. I've got a pretty decent harvest video. It's old. It's um, don't judge too hard because half the shots are out of focus, but I've got a pretty decent harvest video that has half a million views on YouTube. And that is my the project I'm most proud of. Just the storytelling that was involved there. And um, yeah. Okay. So here's a link coming in. That's Doug's uh, video with the intro shot I was talking about. Do you watch... Man, I can't even pronounce that. Uh, the answer is no, I don't watch him. I'll have to check him out. Okay, I just moved my playhead to where I didn't want it. That's color corrected. That's not color corrected. Will it be color corrected? Why, yes, it will. Boom. Okay, but we're also going to have to mess with exposure a little bit here. Hmm... 
not that much exposed. So um, that's how you color correct, guys, right? I think I'm just going to leave it like this. LOL. Yeah, no, definitely not. Uh, is that going to yellow everything out too much? Probably. DJI Osmo 3 video has 1.6 million. Yep, that's a pretty good video right there then. for Well, good hit on the YouTube algorithm. Yeah, that's awesome. If you, okay, so if you make content that is easily searchable, easily relatable, and uh, people just care to watch in the first place, super, like, timely, you have the potential to get into that millions of views category. I have not done it yet. I Big Bud 747, so I covered the world's largest tractor. It was not a perfect project from a technical standpoint because it got rushed out. But um, I did the world's largest farm tractor, and that one is getting probably one to 2,000 views a day consistently, and it might crawl its way up to a million one of these times. It's, it's currently at about 500,000. But I don't know if it will. It could level out and not even make it. But Okay. I haven't told you guys yet, but I have fancy transitions that I get to play with. I downloaded a transition pack before starting this video, and I am not super familiar with transition packs all the time, but I'm going to see what sort of cool things I might be able to do with it without overdoing. And that could be nothing for the sake of not overdoing something, but... Um, so I'm probably going to break this shot. Not quite, but close. It just needs to be lit up a little bit. That color profile does work with it, even though it's in the different white balance with the sun. This is actually a really cool shot right here. You can, If you look at it closely, you see the dust flying up from behind the wheels of the air cart. Not bad. And let's see what this looks like with a little tiny dip. Yeah, yeah. I think I'll leave that there. You know what else is amazing? The fact that my A7S III glorified webcam has not died yet. Like, what's the battery percentage on it? Oh, yeah, it's about to die. <laughs> oh, man. And now that I think of it, I don't even know if I have a second battery for it up here. I think the batteries are in the back of my pickup right now, which is over a ways out. And it would take me forever to go run and get one. So my video feed might just disappear and go black and i will probably just leave it like that to be perfectly honest because i think we're about ready to end this stream anyway and after this color pass so the as7s3 is awesome we were talking about that earlier in the stream it's a monster i cannot believe like it is yeah it's just blowing people's minds what it can do it's i feel like five years ago some of the things that are in this a7s3 you would have had to pay at least ten to twenty thousand dollars for it. Like ten years ago, this is like a hundred thousand dollar cinema camera. Maybe not a hundred thousand dollars, but only the very expensive elite had the feature set that is currently existing in a prosumer camera. It's nuts. Absolutely nuts. And the color straight out of the box is great if you're not gonna be shooting in log and you need to you need to um uh, just get something out quick. And that's a lot of what I do. I am definitely a get something out quick editor. I I like to be a perfectionist, but sometimes it's just not the most realistic thing for me to be able to dial everything in just perfectly. I just got to get stuff out. So that's just kind of how the culture is over here in Aggie land. But I just use PP1. Yeah, I think I'm on PP1 right now, actually. Picture profile one. Okay, well, this shot right here is going to need... What if I added its own color profile back to it? Ooh, boy. I kind of like it, though. I feel like I should send this clip right here to DJI. 
just this shot right here. Like, it is – the horizon's a little – well, yeah, the horizon's a little crooked. I guess you could technically fix that in post. Get these colors worked a little more. And, oh, my goodness, guys, this could definitely be – this could definitely front cover something. This is just a very good shot. And it's just because the lighting, the sun and the clouds when this was shot, was very, very optimal. And this country is also just insane. I really need to do more filming out here than I already do. It's just nuts. It's, just, it's such a cool part of the world. Okay. Let's see what happens here. A little bright. And then I think I'm just going to do what I just did and apply it here. Pretty happy with that. And here's probably going to need a little more work. We're going to have to brighten this one up a little more. Kind of like that. Oh, man, we're just about spilling over on the white, but. Um, oh, we still have 4.7 on our um, temperature slider, too. That's okay, though. It hasn't bothered me this far. This one's definitely going to need an exposure tune. It was a little underexposed there. Yeah, I'm sure DJI doesn't listen. Oh, look, my camera died. Would you look at that? Well, um, I guess goodbye. <laughs> I'm just going to turn the uh, turn that off. Now you can see the rest of my screen capture anyway. Um, and I might. Hang on a second, guys. Be right back. I'm just going to take this opportunity to test and see much a low voltage USB-C. Actually, no, I can't do that. I don't have a USB-C controller. Okay, I'll just overnight it then. Let's make sure I charge the other battery at the garage. Okay, um, I'm back. You can't see me anymore, but I'm back. Um, so, let's see what we got here. Color correcting, drone footage. Wow. This might be one of the best shots right here for color. A little yellow. I actually like kind of popping the way the whites pop a little bit. And yeah, I'm totally ignoring my vector scope here. It's fine. It's for the internet. Nobody cares. If I was doing TV, I'd have to watch this stuff a little more. Uh, but I do want to take a little yellow out. Yeah, as long as it... I know it's not all matching up super pretty because the lighting was just flat out different, but we're not doing bad at all here. And then we're just going to mess with this one a little bit. Try and warm it up a little bit as well. This one I'm actually going to go quite a ways on. Hmm. Okay, we are just about Instagram worthy as is here. So, did I color correct this one at all? It seems so much less bright. And maybe it's just because I changed my workflow just enough that... Okay, it... That's fine. Uh, we'll just leave it about like that. I might add a title slate here. Haven't decided yet. I think I'm going to end up walking away from this project and picking it back up tomorrow. It's good to walk away from things, in my opinion, because then you come back with a new perspective when you sit back down eventually.
This is still going to be epic, though. Okay, found something I want to fix. This comes in a little earlier than I would like for it to. See what that does. <laughs> so it needs to go about like that. And I'll probably put like a little glitchy glitch there or something too. All right, picking back up. Okay, I like it. I'm going to watch it again, as is, and then I'm going to probably mess with some transitions and maybe some sound design tonight, too, if I can get that up and going. Don't worry, that glitch will not be there in the end. Pretty good. Okay. Let's have some fun with some transitions. So let's go back into editing mode. Um, we're going to open another recent project called Transitions 4K. This is basically opening a second Premiere file inside my same workspace so I can quickly switch between the two. And this profile here, I'm just going to drag this tab over here has a ton of preset effects. So we're gonna start with some smooth zooms. We're gonna lag out here. Um, yeah, that's why. And these are just some short, easy ease zoom versions. Oh, that's kind of cool. We have a cross one in here too. All right, so let's see where we would want to put a smooth zoom. Probably when the tractor starts going, I'm going to do an out. So you just drag it in. Oh, hang on a second. We're not there yet. We got to adjust a couple settings. Um, so the resolution one must not have gotten changed. But it is changed here. That is odd. Okay, maybe I should actually read the instructions on these. Is anybody even watching right now? Ah, oh, four people are. Okay, there's somebody here. I just haven't seen the chat work in a little while, so... It's probably getting to be about the point where I shut down for streaming, though. It would just be kind of cool to... Um, for the people watching afterwards to have a reference where sound design comes in. So I might even try and hammer out sound design tonight here before I quit. Let's see what the glitchy ones look like. Load that up. Any year now, Mr. Computer? Hello? Okay, there we go. 
So what does this guy look like? And I need to figure out how to get the original footage shut off on it. Um, okay, instructions, please. Where did we put you? I must have closed the tab. Huh. Okay. Well, maybe we'll do fancy graphic-y things later. Because what needs to happen is I think I need to shut that off. But then my whole effect goes away. That's a little strange. Hmm. That is a little strange. Okay, well, we're going to come back to this pack later. It will not be included in the Riley Slifka or disorganized editing tutorial. Instead, we're going to do another sub-project opening. We're going to open project, and we're going to browse to an archive drive. Flax A 2019. It's going to take a little bit for this to load in. Okay, then we're going to do 2019 seeding, export, not exports, Premiere File, Premiere File, Riley. Edit, probably this one. And it's going to reconvert it to a modern format. And what we're doing here, guys, is we're pulling some prefabbed assets of the tractor sound effect that I made two years ago. So instead of doing all this again, I'm just going to pull in some work I did before and save myself some time. But basically, just think of it as recordings for of engine sounds that I took in the field, and we're going to add those into the video to make it a little more immersive. This is taking a long time to uh, figure out where the original media lives, isn't it? Okay. I don't know what's offline, but hopefully not anything important. We're just going to offline it. Whatever's missing, it's gone. Not going to be around. Don't care about the font. I do care about the engine sounds. So let's see if those are around. And if it'll. Oh, yeah. Totally. So I'm just going to copy all of this into this project. Boom. Now we have engine sounds. And they're even labeled. Look at that. That is super handy. Um, the only thing that's not handy is probably the fact that the way I imported all this stuff, it's got a link to that old project all the time, which means, um, if I ever move the location of that old project, it would break all of this. But I mean, it's not a big concern for this sort of video. So tractor power. What we're going to do here, actually, is I'm going to take the music track. I just froze my computer. It don't work no more. No! Somebody disliked my stream? How dare they? How dare they? It's probably a... Uh, um, man, who would be a guy that would dislike my stream? I can't think of anything clever, actually. Drag that up. Come on, fall in place. Boom. That's going to give me some more room in the lower tracks to work with some sweet sound effects. Wow, this got really laggy all of a sudden, guys. 
Okay, now it's a little better. Now it's a little better. Oh, you said no, I'm going to dislike digging into the art guy for old sounds. Yeah, it's a pain. But luckily I knew where these ones were, so that made it a little easier. And these are all, basically what I did here is I just recorded the air drill passing by my camera and I think did stem loops. And these are actually nested sequences. Um, so it's kind of funky, but it works. Because I did this last year too. I remember also pulling the same sound effects for last year's seeding video with the barley. Okay, so that needs a tractor. T I don't know if I have the tractor idling, though. So I think we won't use sound effects until here. And then we're going to start with the tractor power. Layer in the air cut underneath. Oh man, we cut too soon though. Um, and then we're gonna cut it there. Reposition keyframes. I'm already making a mess out of this, but that's okay. Okay. So we'll cut it there, drag this guy back, make the air cart a little quieter, make the tractor a little louder. Make the air cart quieter over there and no tractor audio. Well, we might put tractor audio there, actually. And then we're going to need more air carts here. Or tractor, I mean, not air cart. I feel like that dip needs to disappear. that air cart fade off there I like it we're getting somewhere with it so now I need the toolbar right here come on let me select for some reason, we're lagging out like nuts whenever we try and mess around with these uh, nested timelines. Boom. Scoot that in. This is going to be pretty sweet when it's done. What's not sweet? Lag. Why must lag? I'm just gonna take the pen tool and draw a couple dots there. That's how I'm gonna do the fade. And then I'm actually gonna extend this out and just make it quieter because I do still wanna hear the tractor. And then I'm going to actually scoot this clip over a little bit because of the speed of the drone. And then the tool. 
toolbar that lets me here. I need to mess around with that toolbar sound a little bit. And the toolbar does not make noise there because it's picked up. So I need to disable it there. And I also want to enable it here. We need to get rid of that sooner. It almost sounds like unwrapping a candy bar more than it does a uh, toolbar, but... And... I almost want that music to come in even heavier, so I might do a little twick here. I might actually gain up. I might actually gain this up by four decibels and then crossfade it here. And that should just slam us right into the epic part of the video. Oh, yeah. And then we're going to add some more sound effects. I'm just going to grab a sample of the three layers here. If Adobe would actually respond to my mouse. I'll give it a minute here, guys. Oh, look, more people showed up. Welcome. We are editing a video and recording a very in-depth tutorial on how to do so. I'm just going to see what happens. Oh, nope, not even close. That's not what I wanted it to do. Okay. So I got to wait for Adobe to unfreeze again. There it goes. And now it'll let me select all of you guys. Nice. And it dumped it somewhere where I don't want any of it, but whatever. Yeah, we're definitely dealing with a bug here, guys. I've never seen this happen before. It's um, whenever we do anything with the nested sequences that I built for sound effects so that I can loop, stem and loop some things pretty easily, it just locks out. Um, so obviously the solution is to just render this stuff out as WAV files and re-import them and they'll work much more nicely, but Riley's lazy. <laughs> That's about what it is right there. Yeah, I've completely locked this system out. Hopefully I can just get this done and not touch it, and then we won't have these issues. Okay. I think we're I think it's gonna let us edit now. Yep. It is. Very slowly. So all of this needs to come over here. Come on. You can do it. There we go. And then let's listen and see what we need to adjust or lock up. Um, I'm actually gonna get rid of the toolbar sound. I think it's a little gimmicky. So we're gonna wait for it to unlock again and then delete the toolbar sound. And that might actually help with our lag a little bit too, so. Any day now, any day now. Oh boy, she's a little stuck. Am I going to get out of this? Or are we just going to be completely locked up? Still lets me save.
Anybody have the Jeopardy music to play while you're waiting for things to happen? We could definitely use that right now. Oh, here we go. We're unlocked. Now we're locked again. <laughs> Immediately locked itself up again. Oh, this is brutal. I really hope I can just disable these audio effects tracks from editing and it won't do it once I have these set and correctly adjusted. Oh man, this is so brutal. I just want to get this pass done, give it a watch, walk away from it, come back tomorrow morning, finish it, and upload it. And not have to deal with silly bugs like this. Come on. You can do it. You can unlock. You know what we're going to try? We're just going to restart the whole app. In fact, um, yes, just go ahead, save, do whatever there. Oh, yes, save that as well. And close. So now we're going to open it again. Okay, we're in. The home screen loaded. And we're going to open 2021 Seeing Reel only. Only this project. We're going to let everything conform. Load back in. Here it is. And let's see. Let's see how things perform here now. Oh, yeah, there we go. That scared me for a second. So I was going to delete the toolbar clip. Oh, look, it instantly did it without lag. Wow, it's a miracle. Yeah, and then we'll just cut this stuff back. And then we'll do one more round of the same. They don't move very easily, do they? And then I'm gonna also have that air cart in there as well. Just because that's what you're ten going to tend to hear from the furthest distance away. And I kind of like hanging on to that air car as the music drops out. Yeah. Oh, this is panned out to my left ear. That's interesting. We're going to turn that off. That's probably because I used panning in the older video. Gonna play some Call of Duty. Good luck on the next video. Hey, thanks. Uh, thanks for watching. Looks like we are air seeding at maxes. We indeed are, Sam. We are editing the video for air seeding at maxes. I've been here for like uh, two hours and 11 minutes doing this, and we're very close to done. Uh, showing these guys how editing works. It's mostly just Riley watching his computer crash and having to restart, but hey, we're getting somewhere. Yeah, now we're locked up again. I froze it. Okay. Um, but we're done with sound effects, and I think that's what was causing it. So if I lock these out, maybe we'll have some better luck. Yeah, we're already we're already caught back up. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and give it a watch as it is. And we are going to... We're going to see... I think we're going to pick it up tomorrow. I, I, It's almost 9 o'clock here, and I haven't. I need to go actually find something to eat and get a couple things done at home and get ready for tomorrow. But um, let's watch what we have.
not bad. I'm going to sit here and watch it over and over again probably, but um you know, that's going to probably do it for the stream here in Bozeman, Montana. I uh, got to get some things done tonight yet, and we'll come back to this project tomorrow. Well, I will at least. I probably won't stream it again, but um, the archive of the stream will go up hopefully almost immediately after I hit end, so feel free to catch up if you've just happened to have joined us. Um, and thank you all for watching. This was fun. I definitely need to do some live streaming more often and, you know, maybe even bring back a variant of Agra Live. So take care, everyone. Have a great night, and we'll catch you next time.